All right, Kyle Mohan Racing, KMR. We're hanging out at the shop. We're wrapping it up. It seems like 12 A's have been rolling through lately. Uh, 12 A parts, very rare at this point. Um, hard to get a hold of your rotor housings, rotors. Uh, obviously, the seals and some of your moving parts, the small components, still available aftermarket and OEM. But uh, whether it be the restoration of a old GT race motor or some kind of performance build, the 12A components and 12A builds are a little more rare at this point compared to your 13B and some of your more modern blocks. It's actually one of the reasons I started playing with the Renesis blocks and the hybrid blocks was uh, trying to utilize more modern parts. But anyways, the 12As, you know, your classic motor, 1.2 liters, slightly narrower rotor and rotor housings compared to the 13B. And um, these motors basically came out of your 79 to 85 RX-7s. Um, I think this particular block is the slightly earlier generation of those numbers. Um, you did have some port shape changes, rotor pocket changes, minor variations. So when it came to restoring this particular performance build, this particular race motor, um, we had to actually source a replacement rotor housing to port match up and we had to source one rotor to match up as well. The whole assembly was uh, rebalanced, side cut for high RPM clearance, matched, blueprinted, uh, new bearings, new seals, um, and then all of the porting, very aggressive. You can see, and this is why I think this is probably more of a GT motor or some type of race motor at some point. You've got your tall port 12A and they've even extended it a little bit just to maximize your volume. And then you can see the uh, secondary ports are actually squared out. So they've increased the volume that can be brought into these uh, side plates as well. Obviously, this is going to be a high RPM motor. It's got a fairly aggressive bridge in there. You can't really see it. The lighting's bad. Um, the water seals didn't get cut in this motor, but it is right up against those water seals. So still, in my opinion, when people are building bridge ports, I like to leave a little bit more of that metal material there um, for long-term sealing. But your traditional bridge ports were either right up against those water seals or actually cut into the water seal. So I think that's why one of the reasons bridge ports are just considered more of a race motor more of a maintenance requiring build um, comparatively speaking to your street port it's not just the fact that these motors are going high rpm uh, need more oil flow more more oil volume um, balancing um, you're bringing in more airflow but it is also relative to how the water seal is being cut treated or sealed up because that is a part of either maintenance or failure of your bridge port um, with it getting uh, balanced and some of those new components, we did opt for new counterweights, polish the eccentric shaft, um, put an oil pan baffle plate in here. So if the driver gets a little wild on some fun turns, uh, you don't have to worry about your oil slosh. And then a lot of port matching, just to clean things up. Not my favorite thing to do to remove the exhaust sleeves, but uh, this motor was already done this way and we could not reverse what had already been done. Um, the material had already been removed. Um, so you may end up again, being that it's a bridge port, I think longevity of this motor is is always going to be a little less than your typical street port or stock motor. You're making more horsepower, you're turning more RPM, um, you're squeezing more air and things like this where the exhaust sleeve has been removed. You're going to be transferring more heat into this aluminum um, via the exhaust gas temperatures. So the potential for shrinkage or just heat transfer in this area, which is already narrow because it is where the exhaust sleeve should be, um, is a potential. Now we did a bunch of dyno testing at Mazda Tricks. Um, you know, outside of your really high flow motors, like a peripheral port, we didn't see really any advantage to removing the sleeves. And most of the times we saw disadvantages because you're actually opening up this area so much that it caused uh, the volume of airflow to be greater than the velocity. And it's always important to have good balance. Now, in this case, you can see they've got some really big intake ports. You've got some really big exhaust ports. If you put a really big 
intake manifold, you know, downdraft setup. This thing probably will work fantastic at 10,000 RPM, and it's going to sound super killer. So, not knocking this motor at all. I think it's really cool. I just like talking about uh, the style of builds, what people do, and uh, how you get to have, at this point, a motor that's 30 plus years old, um, has probably been reworked many times in its lifetime, and now has another go, another chance to brap, brap its heart out, full rebuild, and I'd say resemblance of maybe it's had some, some GT or some racing in its life. We don't know its history. If this motor could talk. Other upgrades, uh, we went to one of the racing beat uh, double sheath pulleys. This is great, especially if you're running the double sheath water pump, eliminates some of the belt slip, gives you better timing marks. Um, it came in this way. It's got the metering pump blocked off. Totally fine with that. Just remember to premix. Um, you know, other than that, we're looking pretty good. I'd say this one's ready to go in a car into a new home. I don't know. It's going to go in something fun. And uh, I think uh, that's about a brap. I just wanted to show another cool 12A motor. A little brapper. Talk about it a little bit. And uh, just to do the final recap, we'll try to go over what we did here, which is full restoration. It came up with, or came in with uh, bearing issues. So bad rotors, uh, side plate damage, and one rotor housing with water seal damage. So in the end, we replaced one rotor and one rotor housing, did port matching, uh, rotor matching, balancing, side cutting, and uh, then redid a full new OEM seal set in regards to corner seals, side seals, and springs, and then went with a one piece three millimeter apex seals because this is a full bridge port. Um, along with some other new components to get this thing wrapped up and squared away, it is now brap ready. So if anybody has questions, make sure to uh, you know drop comments below. Uh, we're always happy to talk about the brap. If anybody needs anything, get your parts from Mazda Tricks, um, or you can hit up KMR. I'm just getting them from Mazda Tricks. They're basically like family. They support the race team. We're out there drifting with Mazda Tricks. And then if you're looking for any service, any engine build, porting work, uh, studying, um, you know, basic engine service, hit up KMR. We work closely with Mazda Tricks and are always happy to help on the service side. So I think that's a wrap. Happy 4th of July because it is a 4th of July weekend. And you can see on the ground, I've actually got another 12A that just came in over there. So I don't know. It's been a 12A party. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll do a little bit of cleanup on that one on the channel as well. All right. Brap, brap. We're out.